Hey everybody, welcome back to Backcountry Amateur Radio. Just wanted to get this video out there because I've had the content, or I've had it filmed for a minute. I just haven't re released it. So anyhow, uh, we're looking at the Radiotity GM30 and what we're looking at doing is scanning for tones and codes. For the example tonight, I want to use our local RADCOM net, which is radio communications. It's an emergency network that is in place in case of an event that would disable local communications. So a lot of participants, much many more than the local ham radio net. And so there's a lot of participants using FRS and GMRS radios. And typically we use channel six with a tone of CTCSS of 88.5. So let's find out if that's being used tonight. And what we'll do is just assume that you know what frequency to listen to uh, because it's fairly easy to scan the channels on these radios, but not necessarily um, straightforward in how to scan for the tones. And again, I apologize that these screens are so hard to film um, because they're so bright. It's one thing that could change with this radio is the screens could be a little bit dimmer, but let's get into this. And, and take a look at what it takes and what to look for and kind of my process and scanning for tones. And it's the same process you'd use to scan for like DCS or digital coded squelch. And um, this is, has worked for me with a variety of radios, but the fact that this has a separate menu for scanning is actually pretty cool. Just another great feature of the GM30. Three hours and on FRS channel six. Okay, this is our local CERT RADCOM, so this is so bright, the screen's hard to copy onto the video here. Let's take a look and see if we're using any codes. So menu item 30 is SEEK which is seek for in Hertz, you see that, HZ, that's for CTCSS. So let's go ahead and turn that on. All right, we'll take that, we'll go ahead and start with roll call. Uh, it's gonna just run through all the different tones. There's a chance that we're not using any tones. See my green light? That is showing that the squelch is being broken, but that we're not using a tone. So anyway, menu item 30 allows you to scan for a tone, a CTCSS. If you go up one to menu item 31, it allows you to see that DN. Very good. That's, that's for well, digital for check -in. Uh, your audio or DCS. This is Eric R, WRFS 364 at home in here with no traffic. Good evening. All right, I really hope that that was um, pretty clear. I'm sorry the screen is so hard to see, so I put all that stuff on the screen. But scanning for tones and codes is pretty important if you know that there's tones and codes being involved in the communication, uh, especially of another group. So, uh, and just, just so you're aware, tones and codes are not privacy. And that's what you, you kind of can see through this video. It's really easy to locate uh, the tone or the code that somebody's using on a given frequency, including GMRS. So um, practice that and, and figure figure out, maybe you can get some friends together and, and get on the radio and, and play around with these GMRS, FRS tones and scanning features. And this GM30 is capable and it's really cool that it does, does it so well. So uh, I will note that once the frequency is located, 
it stops, but it doesn't save it. So you do need to go back and uh, save it if you're doing the VFO thing, or at least program your CTCSS or your DCS, or whatever it is, on the RX or receive so that it matches the, the tone or the number that was displayed that the scan found. So just keep that in mind. Um, that's really important because it does not save that automatically for you. All right, well, moving on to part two, I'm gonna show how you can use uh, that same feature to help you listen to ham radio communication on a, maybe a local ham radio a repeater because it repeaters cover such a big area and it's really hard to know who might be close to you. What you know is if you can hear the radio signals coming from someone's radio, someone's handheld radio probably, uh, you're likely within walking distance, within a day's walk, you know, 10 miles, um, within a day's walk of, of that person. And so that gives you reliance that there might be a place to get help if they are broadcasting their location in, uh, for example, an earthquake scenario, okay, we know that this address, they're at this church, and that might be some communication that you might not hear otherwise. So that's why this next step is, is pretty critical, and that's why I want you to uh, try it. So get on repeater book and find a local ham radio repeater and try to do this same thing. Find that reverse frequency or the uplink frequency, in this case, 147.8 megahertz. And you know, with VHF, uh, the 0.6 megahertz offset is standard. With UHF, uh, or same with GMRS, the five megahertz offset plus or minus is standard. So keep that in mind. I didn't put that in here, but, but definitely keep that in mind. So let's get this started. All right, everybody. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, please leave me some feedback and let me know what you think. Uh, otherwise, uh, enjoy playing with your GM30. I think this is a fun radio to have. Still working on figuring out a good antenna, but I'll let you know what I figure out when I do figure it out. So um, stay safe out there and happy trails. Backcountry Amateur Radio.